November is over. And here's the thing, you guys. You guys are probably all thinking, wow, the title of this episode is totally different than what we discussed last week. And absolutely it is. This oh, is not shit. The book. Do we need to write a new book? Nope, I'm not even going to care. Solid. And you know what? Absolutely. And do you want to know why? Because we read the first two chapters and decided, nah, we're not nah, about bro. that. I'm out. And we decided to change the book. So what we're reading instead is we read One Night on Thanksgiving, a Why Choose One Night Stand by Thea Mason. Rebecca Hamilton is the good girl, the one who doesn't take risks and never hooks up with guys in bars until now. When a snowstorm leaves her stranded on Thanksgiving, she's approached by two mysterious men at the hotel bar and offered a night of decadent pleasure. But these men are more than they appear, and she's about to get far more than she expected. If you dream of being swept away by more than one magical man, you'll love this short, spicy read. Not very mindful, not very, not, very demure. Not very demure, no. Well, who cares? The country's in the trash. Yeah, we're all burning. Welcome to the dumpster fire. I saw these crochet things that are emotional support dumpster fires. <laughs> and I think that it's needed. Any hustles. That's funny. Welcome to the end of the world. We don't know that right now, okay? You never know. This could be like just what we need. Yeah, no, that was dumb. I'll shut up now. For the person who's been so doom and gloom. I'm still, I'm just existing. I think that (laughs) as a PSA, folks, obviously we record these very well in advance. As a heads up, we recorded this two, four days after the election. It's still the same week. Still the same week. Oh my God. We have recorded this four days after the election. Oh my god. This is the same so, week. It feels like it's been forever. If our tone seems a little off, that is <laughs> why we are still dealing with the fallout of that. Even <sighs> though this episode comes out after Thanksgiving and we should be thankful. But you know what? I'm fi- finding it very fucking hard to be thankful right now when half of our country are fucking idiots. And you know what? I don't even give a shit right now. Fucking nope. take that shit. Eat the bag of dicks. <laughs> Eat a bag of dicks. If I Eat had a- your address, I would send you a bag of dicks. Eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> and if anyone follows me on my personal TikTok, I am not sorry for how spicy I've been. <laughs> Anyways, I just had to get that out of the way now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see? So even TikTok has, well, maybe you just have to be on the right side of TikTok. I keep seeing people complaining about things. I'm apparently very catered to the right my right side of tiktok because i don't ever see anything that doesn't almost purely align with hyping me up oh no 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 everything hypes me up on tiktok but, right now. it's great but what i'm saying is so i just had a a post that said and i shared it with you that said everyone should probably go into their search bar and type in Christmas 2024 or holidays 2024 because it's not the norm right now. I did. I just typed the search bar. I screen shared it for you so you could see. It's basically mm-hmm. like send somebody a bag of dicks, send someone a jar of fucks that they get. Oh, is that what you were so- sending us in the group chat? <laughs> it was like this year, <laughs> I don't want anything for Christmas because the world is on fire. It was like <laughs> TikTok delivered. Like my favorite fuck shop thing, delivered. Like, my favorite thing is and again i'm okay you know what i was sorry before i'm not currently sorry because all who i was never sorry y'all just if you listen to this and you if you listen to our podcast and if you are uneducated on to how your vote is was spent that side has an agenda right now and is public about it so it's not like they're hiding anything it's very public about it and has a list of things that they are trying to abolish and ban. And amongst those things, at a minimum, is literally what we're doing right now. So if you're enjoying our content, they don't want that to be a thing anymore. 
Yeah. So if you actively voted against our ability to read what we like to read and talk about what we like to talk about, why are you here? And we don't want you here then at that point. And I mean, again, we typically already think that the six people listen. Again, I've boosted it to six. It might go back down to two now. (laughs) And And that's okay. And that's okay, though. But like we we want to be able to have and that's and that's it. And we want to be able to have the choice to be able to read the books and bring these to you. And I've had so many comments of people who look forward to listening to us talk about these ridiculously sometimes over the top smutty ass books okay sometimes they're but if not they're smutty. banned but if they're banned we can't do Bye. it what are we gonna do what are we gonna do talk about let's talk about our lord and savior absolutely fucking not just we encourage you <laughs> to be educated so yeah this book was actually shorter than i thought it says 71 pages it was 40 <laughs> So I had grand intentions to read an additional book in her series and tell you about I it. I didn't. But I read one chapter because – no, two chapters maybe. And I got distracted and didn't finish because I I had drama of my own. And I've been up since one this morning because I decided to write a follow-up to that email and add Ooh. more at 1 a.m. So – you know what? Here's the thing. The world is in chaos. And that's so okay. we are too. Because here's the thing. Apparently, nothing fucking matters. Nothing matters. Woo! Nothing matters. Nothing so Rebecca, matters. Rebecca is not feeling particularly grateful that she because wow. she should be welcome to the club, Biatch. Honestly, it's so funny because I read that the screenshot you sent me. I was like, oh, so this is like on topic right now for how we're currently feeling. Listen, right? And I almost DNF'd it again because it kept f- trigger wording me. And I was like, bitch, I can't do this it's again. Just be- it's just because of how I'm feeling. This is, is coming at a very rough time for everybody. Well, for us. So because she should be with her family eating turkey and mashed potatoes and listening to Uncle Frank rant about the gas prices and Nana telling stories about how she escaped the Nazis because of a handsome fae prince and a unicorn. Her stories are a little eccentric and she's a little bit senile, but you know what? That is okay. She, it's fine. I'm okay with that. I would love that. A fae prince and a unicorn. Fucking beautiful. Can they also come help me escape my life right now? I wish there was a little more detail. Me too. Can we get Nana's story? And right, or anything to the story. I, I understand that. that it meant it was meant to be very short. Yeah. But could we have had a I little insight it. into any uh, of this? That'd right. Be great. Yeah. Instead, she is in a hotel bar nursing a scotch, which is, by the way, scotch fucking disgusting. I hate that shit. It burns so bad. I've tried it. Ugh. Anyways, because it is snowing so hard outside that her flight was canceled. The only redeeming quality about this place is that there are some hot ass businessmen in well tailored suits two in particular are really providing her with some really nice eye candy and they're sitting at the other side of the bar and besides being extremely hot they are very intriguing to her their suits are also a little bit odd she thought they were black at first but one is actually kind of like an iridescent green and the other is so dark like such a dark blue that she couldn't even tell it was green Blah 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 blah. The other one was blue, but she couldn't tell it was green originally until it like hit the light. What? I pictured like that velvet material, Ooh. that like dark velvet yeah. material, and that's why she had a hard time, and that's why she was saying they were a little odd. But like, why is she being a judgy bitch? If they want to wear velvet suits to the bar, they can wear velvet suits to the bar. Maybe they They're be hot. feeling. Fa- maybe they be feeling fancy. Maybe they be feeling fancy. Fancy free, bitch. They do a lot of good things, okay? Fancy feast. Meow, Those meow, are for meow. cats. Well, they do like cats. <clears throat> they like kitties. There's a difference. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> they're not eating the cats. They're eating the kitties. I'm so sorry. That was so inappropriate. Anytime that one of them catches her looking at them, they smile or wink or raise their glasses in a salute. It's not enough to make up for missing Thanksgiving, but it is helping her not think about what Brad just told her just before she left. She he clearly is not, has not heard of before bean movement. No. <laughs> but she is not ready to be exclusive. They've been seeing each other for the, like six months and everything. And she thought everything was just going so great. And she was so ready to make it official. But, you know, every time he would just be pulling back. She even invited him on this business trip thinking it would be perfect. He didn't have any family. And she wanted to have a talk about becoming his official girlfriend. 
but he said he wasn't ready to make that commitment. He even told her that I'm she was being a bit nice. She was being pushy and needy. When Rebecca asked if he was seeing other people, his exact words were, of course I am. We're not exclusive. I thought you would also take advantage of that. Douche canoe. Of course, I will say, I have been in that position, though, and I can sure. understand that you've got, you, sometimes. But as long as you're clear, and she obviously was not on the same page. No. She was furious, but he got up, but this is the part that he became a douche canoe. He got all sweet and gave her some explanation that got her into bed. And then after a marathon of sex, she had asked Brad if he would still come on the trip, but he said he had plans. Basically, he had plans with the other girl. You know what? Maybe her sister is right, and she's just not adventurous enough and too stuck up and too reserved and too judgmental. But you know what? She is going to show them all and do something out of character and impulsive. This, by the way, is not me because I would have done all this anyways. I am not too stuck up and reserved and judgmental. Well, I'm judgmental, but I'm not stuck up and reserved, and I would have done this. And before she can even second guess herself, she calls over the bartender and orders two tonic waters and is going to send them to the men. She has never bought men drinks before. After they take their drinks, they come over to her and say, we were taking bets on when you would get the courage to approach. I'm Leander, and this is Thorn. She tells them her name is Lily, and Thorn just says, that's a lie. <laughs> Like instantly. Leander asks if they should just let it slide. Rebecca asks if their names are fake. Thorne says, of a sort. Leander says the only person who knows my true name. Which uh, we never only... learned more about any of that either. No. There's only one person who knows my true name. Normally, this much attention makes her uncomfortable. But you know what? For one night, she does not want to be Rebecca Hamilton, the good little girl. For once, she wants to do something impulsive. She asks them if they live in the area. Thorne tells her, that's not what you really want to ask. He is really getting down to it. He leans in closer and his breath kisses her neck. Leander assures her that they're not serial killers, which is a valid concern. Thorne tells her that he can be a little perverse if she wants him to be, but they won't hurt her and they won't do anything she doesn't want to do. Leander tells her that they both want her and it would be not fair if only one of them got to taste Rebecca. Do -do -do. She has no idea how this would work with the two of them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Leander tells her to decide quickly. Le Leanda? Leanda. Leander <laughs> decides to oh, decide tells her to but decide like quickly. Linda, but like Yeah. Yeah. Decide tells her to decide quickly because they need to fuck someone tonight. And they would really prefer it to be her. <clears throat> she agrees. She's like, okay. And says she is in. And he says, Oh no, we are in. So they head to the elevator. Leander has his hand on the small of her back, and Thorne walks in front of them. Thorne, when they get in there, he pushes the button for the presidential suite, which is top floor. As the elevator is rising, why did I say raising? I don't know. Rise up, rise like the day. As the elevator is rising, Leander pushes the button to stop it. Thorne flashes him a little look and says, "We aren't there yet." And Leander <laughs> says, Duh. "I don't like. To, I don't like to wait." Thorne says, patience. And Rebecca's like, does it really matter where we do this? But Thorne says, this was supposed to be about the ceremony. Rebecca says, okay, now you're freaking me out. I didn't sign up for any ceremony. Leander says, calm down. It's just a tradition around this you time of year. calm down. You're being too loud. Around this time of year, it will not affect your experience. It will only enhance it. This big guy over here just likes his routine. Rebecca then spins around to Leander and kisses him. Right now, she has decided that Leander's elevator idea is a great one. And she does wish that Thorne would join, but another part of her loves knowing that he's just standing there and watching. Leander starts to undo her shirt without breaking contact with her lips, and the kiss starts to become way more passionate. He slides her shirt off her shoulders, but does not unbutton the tight cuffs at her wrist, and which forces her hands into a loose binding, keeping her from removing his clothes. Thorne comes in and says, take off her bra. Of course, Rebecca gets a little mouthy and tells him to take it off himself. <laughs> he does not. She whispers to Leander, let's see how long he takes to break. So Leander pulls her into a rough kiss. Thorne again says, take off her bra. And Leander just says, I believe the lady asked you to do it yourself. Rebecca turns to face Thorne with her hands still cuffed and she starts to undo Leander's belt. While holding eye contact with Thorne, she takes Leander's cock out of his pants and she starts to pump him. Thorne once again says, take off, off your bra. Rebecca instead takes off her underwear. 
and tries to fling them, but it flings backwards and lands on her chest. But he takes two steps forward, picks them up, smells them, then puts them in his pocket. And then he teases her with a kiss. The two men share a look and Leander ducks underneath her and traps his body between her back and her wrist. So like in between. Yeah. Anyways. And his cock is pressed between her butt cheeks and his hand wraps around her front and then pushes against her inner thighs. Thorn tells him to make sure she does not come. Thorn tells her, we will let you come and it will be magic and it will be the best orgasm of your life, but not yet. And then he kisses her and Leander's cock is like gliding between her thighs and they are really, really edging her bad. Then Thorn drops to his knees. Leander like pulls back. And he and Thorn starts to, like, play with her clit. He eats her out. Le- and Leander starts playing with her nipples at the same time. And every time she would get really, really close, Thorn but would so stop. But th- here's the thing. All of a sudden, her bra wasn't there anymore. Yeah, I know. Nobody ever took it off. But it was poof, gone. It's magic. Do you believe in magic? Oh, uh, so we didn't have finished. any explanation. I know. Thorn slams his hand on the wall pushing the elevator Mm -hmm. button and tells her that we will satisfy you thoroughly. Just don't rush us. She nods knowing that at least she knows what she's in for. She had asked Brad to try edging her once, but he did not last very long. And as soon as she would get close and started begging, he would just give in anyways. They get to the floor. And of course they have the entire floor to themselves because she's like covering herself. And then they're like, bitch, this is our entire floor. (laughs) Because that's what a presidential suite is, guys. And she cannot stop smiling. What? Let's not say that word. I was being fresh. That would call the penthouse sweet. Is that better? She cannot stop smiling because these two beautiful men picked her. Thorne asks her if she's afraid of heights, and she says no. And he takes her over to the like massive windows, like the whole wall of windows, and puts her palms on the glass. And he starts to caress her, talking to her, asking if she likes the risk of leaning on fragile glass 24 stories up. Now, I wouldn't have been afraid of heights until you start talking about the glass being super fragile and leaning against it. And then I'd be like, okay, maybe not. (laughs) Maybe this is not what I'm in for, guys. Okay. Then he turns her around and kisses her. And then she catches sight of Leander completely naked, walking behind Thorn. She decides to walk straight over to him and drops to her knees and licks him straight from balls to tip. Leander jokes and asks, was was Thorne not doing it for you? And Thorne says, I will show you exactly how I do it for her, but you will have to kneel. Leander immediately kneels in front of her, and then Thorne comes up behind her, lifts up her hips, scoots her knees out a little, lays, her, lays down on his back directly underneath her. Leander scoots up, so basically, and then just says, your Thanksgiving feast, my lady, if you want it, which is hilarious, apparently. His dick is her feast. So she's going to blow Leander while Thorne eats her out. And again, just as she is about to orgasm, Thorne suddenly stops and tells her, not yet. But she looks him directly in the eye and says, no more waiting. I want you inside of me. I want you to fuck me. And they say, as you wish, which just reminds me of The Princess Bride, which is a great movie, by the way. Oh, (laughs) see, I got more of a thing. As you, no, as you wish. I love The Princess Bride. It's such a great movie. Then she undoes Thorne's pants. (laughs) And... (laughs) He is thicker than Leander, just not as long, but he is a he's a thick boy. And they tell her, come on. And they lead her down a hallway, a wide hallway, to a set of ornate double doors. The wood doors are carved with trees and flowers. And when they push it open, it reveals a fucking forest. What? No, doesn't even question it. And she just goes, what is this? It's a well, okay, so she questions, but like not... <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but not like in the way a normal sane person would question. Yeah, more. she just goes with it. Like, okay, yeah. there's a forest Leander, here now. Yeah, and Leander says, "Welcome, <laughs> last flower of summer." Apparently, she's like just as loony as Nana because she's pretty sure she's about to spend the night with two fae princes. But you know what? She's gonna do it anyways. In the middle of the clearing, there's a slanted boulder covered in soft moss and thorn stretches over the top of the stone on his back leander asks if she's ever done this before and she's not even sure if he's talking about a threesome or having sex with magical beings because that is definitely what they are but if this is losing your mind she is all for it and honestly i would also be all for it at that point leander says if you want to stop at any time just say sycamore and it's done no questions asked 
She asks about a condom. But and Thorne Thorne's says, like, mm, nah, bro. And I'm like, that is you? not part of the deal. And she, and if you're not comfortable with that, you can just walk away. And she just says, well, and Leander keeps it. having to be like, no, no, you can go. And Thorne's like, mm, no, bitch, no. <laughs> and she just says, fuck it. And then they DP her, which is fantastic. They do take her their time doing it. Like, That's Leander's all you're going like, to say. Leander's really nice about it. He prepares her, like, with his thing. He's, like, so Thorne's, nice about Thorne it. Thorne lays down on this, like, massive fucking Well, rock. yeah, he's, like, laid down. I said that earlier. He was, like, laid down on it. And he's, like, and but Thorne's and in pulls her-, her, like, roughly on top of him and just, like, Thorne Oops. is the rough one. And Leander's just, like, trying to be, like, so nice and, like, gentle and, like, massaging her asshole before he, like, fucks her in the ass. And then they, you know... They make her come, but they do not come. And she asks why they didn't, but they don't answer. <laughs> like They don't tell her why they did it. And then they just walk into a stream after, you know, everything. And Leander asks her to clean him. So she does that. And then Thorne appears with some blackberries and, you know, puts them in her mouth. And before she can chew them, Thorne tilts her head so he could kiss her. And then they each smash blackberries between their thumbs and then puts them on her nipples. And then they lick the blackberries off her nipples and then they dp her again which is great in because we have read yeah and it's great though because we have had so many books where we're like just dp the girl and they don't and then this book that's all they do and i'm like okay that is what we want though when we when we think threesome we want we want that that sounds fabulous and then they all they all come at that point she wakes up in a soft bed with white sheets with Thorn on one side of her and Leander on the other. Leander says, good morning, Omi Theo. I can't pronounce that, but that is the best I got for you. Which is what he calls her throughout the entire book. <laughs> so that's the best I got. Apparently, it means just the closest thing to the Autumn Queen, the Desired One, and the last heat wave. Heat wave balance, sorry, between the two seasons. That's the full sentence. I shouldn't have stopped. She notices that their touches this morning are different. They're more relaxed, less urgent. And Leander lifts her on top of him, and she asks them to fuck her. And the sex that follows is an intimate goodbye. It's more leisurely and sensual and decadent. And she wonders if she will ever see them again. And Thorn just says, perhaps. And she thinks the thought, and Thorn answers her thought. So just know that. It's not important, but <laughs> I just think it's funny. And... Perhaps when the leaves fall and seeds are buried and a wink. Does that mean she's going to get pregnant from this? That's the only thing I can think of. And they tell her goodbye. And when she leaves for the airport, she feels as if she's entered a new season. Braver, more confident. And she won't be seeing Brad again because duh. But he doesn't even really want her. And she sees that now. And she is done placating, giving into what he wants, ignoring her own needs. And she's done letting her fear of being alone dictate her actions. She is ready for something more and something better and she is grateful and that is the book and it stopped at 42 pages and i was like i thought this book was 71 <laughs> it was a whole nother but there's a whole nother book. book yeah and i was like oh but well, there we go so many so unanswered things i well i wish that if you're going to have i've said this before too i wish that if you're going to have a novella it needs to be all encompassing you need to give us the entire thing there's a lot of world in this I wanted the world. You need to world build. I want the world. Yeah. If you're going to give us a world, you need to world build. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but it can be done. I have seen it done. So, well, I also downloaded another book by the same author. I was just curious because um, when I was writing this book on Goodreads, another book popped up and it was um, called Stiff. I. I don't know what made possessed me to click on it to read the blurb, but I did. And it basically was like, we can't really talk about the blurb because then it would get taken down kind of thing. But basically it's an inanimate object kind of shifter romance type of deal. So basically this witch curses this man in like the 14th century because he's a selfish pig into being a dildo. And he's going to be a dildo until a woman chooses to put this dildo in her mouth on her own the man made all these promises to the woman and then he basically like left her waiting and without any pleasure and it was all for him and well now the pleasure now he's stuck 
feeling pleasure edged for centuries. So did you pick it because it fits the climate really well? I picked it for lots of things. So yeah, I did not finish it yet. I will. I did not finish it yet, but I foresee. So there's a, there's, there's a couple paths because I foresee what I hope doesn't happen, but I know probably will happen. And then I foresee what my dumpster fire brain wants to happen right now. So which version would you like? Surprise me. (laughs) I think in the dumpster fire version that this dildo becomes like the dildo of the traveling pants kind of thing. The sisterhood of the traveling dildo. And this man is edged for ever and ever and ever and ever. And every time a woman uses it, they get the powers to curse a man in their life to also become a dildo. And then it's like chain mail. That's my version. I I like that. But what probably happens is the guy has learned his lesson after centuries. And then this woman does this and then they, they become an item. Boo. Boo. I like mine better. I like, I like better. yours a lot better too. I'm yeah. trying to find. I almost wonder if I don't want to read it now because I like mine better. Yeah. Listen, to quote... The great Topanga Lawrence. This world of ours will seem like a very peaceful and loving place, especially when we move all the men underground and use them just for breeding purposes. Dude, there's a book. We need to find it again. There's a book that that's the concept. Perfect. I'm feeling I'm feeling spicy. I feel like that. We so need to all I can say is plant in our garden. Yes. Who's your favorite character? You know what? I like Leander because he was like the gentler of the two solid I just wish someone would have told me anything I am that bitch who would just be like okay <laughs> we just go <laughs> along with it I probably still would have been at the bar petting their velvet <laughs> yeah I'm gonna say that if they've been like I can show you the world shining shimmering splendid I'd be like okay let's go I'm going to say the bartender because she he probably gave her some real good shit. Ooh, probably. That's good. Who's your least? Everyone else because nobody gave me any information. The snow for ruining her plans. Oh, and the boyfriend. Or not Ooh, real that boyfriend. The, 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 the fuck, friends with the benefits. Fuck the fuck toy. Yeah. That one. Brad. Can we name him Kyle? Amazon gives us a 4.0 and Goodreads a 3.7. What did you rate it? I'm going to go with a 2.5 only because I want more world. I want more. Boy. I rated it a 2 also because I know nothing. How about a And I don't like not knowing things. I know. I'm going to go with a 5. I like me some sandwiches. I do love a sandwich and they took really good care of her to be Mostly honest. because I fucking love bread. Put anything in some bread. Sandwiches are fucking fantastic. Sandwiches of all kinds. Any sandwich. Give me any sandwich. We don't discriminate against sandwiches. Nope. Any sandwich. Except maybe sun butter. Is sun butter really that gross? I've never had sun butter. I don't know. Butter. I don't eat it. But the kids complain. <laughs> I don't really. I, I don't... do love a good sandwich. I take that back because who cares? It's best bread. I'd probably still eat it. So, okay. I was at this, <clears throat> I was at this seminar, this like play and learn seminar on it's like the philosophy of like every child should be playing in school even up to like high school and whatnot well Um, i don't know we might not have school soon so right so who cares but because you do your best learning through play blah 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 and they catered it and they gave us these sandwiches and almost no one in the room would eat these sandwiches because they were like from this like hoity-toity place that put this it was this weird like there were so many seeds in the bread and there was like, which I love fucking seeded bread, first of all. Uh, and so I was not opposed to that, but they, they put this like weird smear on it that they like made themselves. It was like this like weird cream cheese smear on the bread. And then they put all these like weird meats on it and stuff. They just made, they tried to make it fancy and it didn't work. It was like trying to make fetch happen. It just didn't work. I still ate it because it was bread and I love bread and that was cool. I had meat and bread. I just took the cheese out because, you know. Oh. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have taken the cheese out because I'm needing some cheese, but. Well, you know. What else do we have to do? Oh, survivability. Survivability. I'd be fine. I'd have a great time. I'd be fine. I'd want to stay in the forest, though. That sounds fun. All I can think of 
all I could think of when they were describing the forest and everything, I know this is not what they were talking about, but all I could think of was like the nymphs in Charmed. Mm. And that like, I don't know, did you, you, you saw Charmed enough that you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And they, they, you know, the girls that would like flitter through the forest and then, yeah, (laughs) that's all I had in my mind of like, just shimmering through the forest and the forest nymphs. That's all I got. Yeah. What are we reading next week? We are reading something. We are reading A Winter Romance. That's a you book, baby. Yes. So next, we are saying goodbye to November. We are hoping for a better December. As long as we're still on air, folks. We're not radio. You never know. Maybe we'll be doing it from a bunker. Who knows? I don't have a bunker. I don't have money for a bunker. We could build one. Maybe. Secret links. We have not told the government. The government knows nothing. We are not building a bunker. Uh-huh. No, no bunkers here. Okay. Okay. Next not talking week, about our escape plan. <laughs> we are diving into December and we are going to be diving into all of the winter favorites. We're not landing a plane. It was a snow angel. Oh. <laughs> I was diving I in like, a snow angel. I thought you were like, okay, landing here. <laughs> we're going to be... Starting next week with our winter solstice book. Yes, it's out of order. Yes, we're just trying to cram everything in. Just enjoy the ride. Suck a dick. A bag of dicks, if you'd like. Send us your <laughs> send us your address. I'll mail you one. With a blue bracelet. Next week we are reading A Winter Romance by Gigi Rivers, which is an MM fantasy winter solstice holiday novella. Aaron should have never left the city. If he hadn't, he wouldn't have gotten lost in the mountains, thrown by his horse and left stumbling through the snow, trying not to freeze to death. All seems hopeless to Aaron when suddenly a half-nymph appears in the forest before him. And not like all day, every day, therapist, mother, maid, (laughs) nymph, then a virgin. Nurse, then a servant. Yeah, just in a bandage, live to a nymph. So then he never lifts it's a finger. finger. 24-7 baby machine. Baby. So he can live he can out live his picket pants dreams. It's not an act of love. If you make her, you do too much labor. Anyways. <laughs> After suffering a heartbreak, Sarah sought quiet in the forest, away from his village. But his plan of solitude is ruined when he comes across Aaron a man who clearly does not belong in these mountains. Now, Sarah is stuck caring for him. He brings Aaron back to his cave, and unfortunately, there's only one bed. When a cold, snowy night turns steamy hot, Sarah decides that perhaps the man isn't so bad after all. Well, now that he's in your bed, huh? On an impulse, Sarah invites Aaron to stay with him in his village until the winter solstice festivities. But as the solstice draws near and feelings grow, could there be a chance... For something more than just a winter romance. Join us next week for some MM fun and not the rainbow kind. Well, actually, it is the rainbow kind. I was thinking the chocolate kind, but like, you know, the colorful. This is very much the rainbow kind. But make sure to keep reading. And keep it smutty (laughs) and fruity. (laughs) Keep it brutally smutty. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck.